Hi everyone, welcome to Mess to Masterpiece. My name is Alicia and I am so excited that you have joined me today to learn about tick-borne conditions. And there are so many tick-borne um, illnesses these days and it seems like it's just growing in popularity. I, I heard just the other day of two other people that I know that have been diagnosed. And so what are they to begin with? When we say tick, a tick-borne illness or a tick-borne disease, we're talking about a disease that was carried that by the tick, and so the it, the tick was infected with bacteria or viruses or parasites, and then when it bites you, then you're given that infection as well. Um, it's a lot. I've I've noticed that it's very much dependent upon what area you live in. Some certain ticks are more prominent in other in areas that others might not be. Um, and also another thing about tick-borne illnesses that's kind of tricky is that you may not know if you've contracted a, a tick-borne illness until years later. Um, sometimes there are acute signs if you know what to be looking for, um, but other times there's not. And so like me, I had three different tick-borne diseases, actually four, that buried and I was bit probably by lots and lots of ticks growing up and um, because of just playing outside and growing up in Kentucky. And then now here I am 20 years later and finding out that I have all these, you know, tick-borne illnesses. So that's, it's, um, can be tricky. So the most common, so what's the most common tick-borne illness is Lyme disease. So you might, again, you might've heard that. Um, I also have um, a few others that are tick-borne, Bartonella and Babesia. I had never heard of them. I thought some, they were speaking a foreign language when the doctor told me. Um, but also Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever is another one um, that I've had. Thankfully, with the Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever, we were able to treat that. And so that my level that they had measured in the blood went down and, or was basically non-existent and so that may, takes away that illness in a sense um but with the babesia and bartonella and lyme i'm going to talk about the complications with treating alpha gal is also another super common illness especially in this area where i live um, in virginia and it's from the caused by the lone star tick and so um, it affects people's able to, ability to eat meat or anything from mammals. And so certain products, even like gelatin that can be found in a lot of medications and other things that are just that you wouldn't even think about um, that they can people with alpha gal have to avoid. So that's definitely interesting for sure. So what are the symptoms of tick-borne disease? How do I know? So if you're thinking about a short-term thing, you get bit by a tick. Definitely be careful. You need to be on the lookout for fever, chills, rashes, bumps, anything that looks suspicious. Or if you have anaphylaxis, that's a reason, definitely a reason to go to the emergency room, um, especially when you're not sure of what, what's going on. So be on the lookout for that if you are bitten by a tick. Um, as far as long-term effects, it manifests different in everybody. And depending on some, a lot of the times, if you have one of those tick-borne, then you have either a couple or a pair. They normally don't come by themselves. Um, however, they can cause a slew of issues. So they can cause aches and pains, joint stiffness, um, irregular heartbeat, and sweats or not sweating. It's can be very interesting. Um, also, neurological ish and GI issues are all part of, of tick-borne illnesses. And so you can tell that's really broad and that's really like all over the place. And it really can affect more than you think. Um, I've known several people that have had just debilitating, completely debilitating issues from just tick, just tick-borne disease. And you'd think it's just that, but it's not. It's, it's a lot harder. And part of the reason it's harder is because of the treatment. And so uh, what kind of treatments do you need for tick-borne illness? Most of the time, doctors recommend IV treatment for a long period of time, for like three to six months. And so for somebody like me, that can be when I had a line or another way to get access, like a port, that was helpful, and we could try to make that work. Um, although for the average, most everyday average people, they don't have, you can't, you don't walk around with a pick line. So it can be a lot harder to, to treat and to target that. Um, they also, you can go with with an IV if you have a line or a line 
you know, in use, then you can do IV antibiotics or other antibiotics orally. Um, for somebody, again, for somebody like me with other conditions like mast cell, I'm not able to tolerate the antibiotics they're used to treat. And so it's like, do we can make it a whole lot worse trying to treat my body because of with something I'm allergic to. But then it also, if we don't treat it, then it's a problem. So it's kind of a rock and a hard place. Um, and that's why a lot of people go towards the functional medicine route and go with natural means. And so whether it's taking certain herbs or, herbs or supplements, that's also an option. Again, you have to watch out if you are, have comorbidities like me because of allergies and things like that. So um, what can you do? Now that you know a little bit more about ticks, what can you do? Um, research. Become more and more aware of it. I think that's our education is the first step. But the second step is make sure that if you are outside, especially this summer, and the weather has been so nice and it's and it's easy to go and be playing in the woods or spit with your kids or, you know, out in an area that has a lot of ticks, then and just forget, you know, you come in, you're tight, and you forget to check. But take the time to check right there that day, that moment, and that way then you, you don't, you're you preventing, hopefully, problems down the road. Um, so, again, I'm not a doctor or a nurse or medical advice, but this is just my experience with tick-borne illness. So if you have any comments or questions, you can always feel free to message me or comment below.